I made this video well, a few years ago now. I wanted to make something that tried to express not only the cycles that we go through, the larger ones, but how we then go inside and we go through all different cycles of experience. And it seems that no matter how large you look out into the universe, or s how small you look to yourself, all you see are cycles. Cycles that keep repeating themselves eternally. Smaller ones inside bigger ones, inside bigger ones, inside bigger ones. But they are all cycles. And so it is the experience of human beings that we cycle through experiences. We're not, not meant to stay in one place too long. We're supposed to move, grow and change and evolve. Each season is an opportunity to be that little bit more of yourself than what you were the previous season. And <laughs> in 2020, the world found out that it wasn't Nibiru, it wasn't all these other things that was going to be the world changing event. It was COVID, something that creates a mass awakening awareness in people that things, things aren't quite really right and that we really need to look at what's going on. And there are lots of people out there with loud voices that come up with all these solutions that are all funneled in one direction. And they become categorized as extremists, and, you know, swinging to either the left or the right. I mean, I don't really care. I'm an equal opportunity political, you know, partyist. <laughs> I'll put you on either side of whatever label they want, you know, to put you in, in society, that if you're holding extremist views, that, well, it's not good for all, it's not good at all. I mean, there are simple philosophies that you can live by that aren't written down in any laws, that it's just common sense. That when you experience enough things in life, you realize that, well, every time you get comfortable, something's going to happen that will shake it up. And like I'm doing right now, a recording with a new program. I've been using this old crappy one for ages and not only does it do a much better job, it stays in sync, but instead of making it a 2.3 or 5 gigabyte video, it's about 300 megabytes. So the ease of using it and all I had to do was just evolve, change. Not that I had to stop doing a particular thing. Just check out something different to see if I can actually benefit from that something different. And of course when 2020 came out there were lots of different people coming out with lots of different opinions. And within a short period of time, I also realized that there was a polarization happening in these groups that I felt uncomfortable with. And I was going to attend the first Freedom March or whatever that they had, but then uh, it's, they, there was just something wrong with it. They didn't have anything organized and, you know, I watch I don't watch TV, I use the internet and I've watched things that are uh, like Big Brother and, oh, what's that one in, in the UK? Uh, it's The Circle. And 
you start to look at how much people become invested in becoming influencers and yet these people are not even playing themselves you know they they're playing a character and they're saying things that are going to win friends get likes and make them an influencer well the thing is that really if you are an influencer you're actually saying what everybody wants to hear not necessarily what people need to hear though and in 2020 the world found out that that kind of empty conversation for the from the influencers was disorganized they didn't have a clue what they were doing and I suppose that there are probably millions of adults in Australia that realized and probably the world that how much of what goes on and how you know like what they came out with all their marches and everything how that's representing a growing discontent in society yet it's not the majority of society and there's still people like Max Egan who are saying oh well you know people aren't waking up how could people line up for the vaccine blah 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 and it's it's like on the one hand they're saying it's massively red pilled the whole world and on the other hand saying that you know everybody's well, I can't believe how many millions are so stupid and they're still asleep and why don't they wake up because you know we're screwed you know if you listen to people like Max Egan uh, and so many like him that all they do is tell you how you're screwed and how that there are limited options that they're offering that they can try and help you but this is where all the alarm bells start you know they they start getting raised for me and for others out there because we are not waiting for people to provide the answers for us we will listen and hear the answers ourselves. and when we hear people talk there's these little alarm bells that go off because oh, I don't know something they just said you know that they they're pretending to be this one thing and yes they're selling a lovely story but you know there was just something that little something that they might have said or the way that they said something that all of a sudden broke that trance that you were in while you were watching them and you asked a question in your head that didn't make sense why didn't that make sense now there are too many people out there that are loud voices and are controlling the alternative voices Max Egan is one of them and I'd say that Pete Evans is trying to buy his way into a lot of that too and then there were all these others that when the lockdown in Victoria happened they all came to the forefront and it all it seemed like there was this lockdown and then there was this opposition to it and yet there was no clear direction in what that opposition was it was just a force that was coming against and saying no you can't do this to us but it didn't actually offer any solution it was offering opposition and opposition to I've got my rights I'm going to stand here I can do this I don't have to do this what you tell me because I've got my rights and the thing was that no matter how many of them stood up so many of them got arrested so many got shut down silenced and the thing was that as a certain number of people started to get louder voices and at first you listen to them and you think yeah I like what you're saying but then you listen to them a little bit more and you realize that there's this real uh, misdirect going on not necessarily from them but from your perspective the way you're perceiving what they're actually achieving or doing like what has come out in opposition to what went on in 2020 worldwide has pretty much been to polarize in opposition to something and whenever you go in opposition to something you will meet resistance 
and this is what I've said before about how the problems that we need to solve today, now, for a better future, are not easily solved. They require us to really think, to really be critical, and not so much to look to other people to validate what we already know. But I know that we all use other people to, and what they have experienced to try and validate some of our own. And in the same sense that what I present on my channel is to validate my perspective, which is why I've done Ed's Head and why I'm going to introduce Brendan because he, these young guys, have got this perspective that is so well balanced in that they're not buying in to the main dose that's been offered by these loud voices. They're actually listening, but when they hear something that doesn't sound right, they start asking questions. And they're not willing to say, well, I don't want to know an answer. They want to know the answer to the question. Why am I bothered by what this person is saying? What is it in particular that they're saying that is actually bothering me? Now, some it's very easy to identify. And others, it's just something you can't put your finger on it. You just know it. And I have experienced this for, well, a lot of years, a lot of decades, that there have been things that I have initially looked at and thought, wow, this is really great. And once the information has been presented, it's then just, yeah, like this video, it's on a loop. It just keeps going round and round and round. It doesn't go anywhere different. It stays the same. And even though they might bring in a little bit of a different picture, it's still part of the loop. And this is where I look at the options that have been the Aussie Patriots role that is offering lawful rebellion, trying to sign up people for this um, takeover, lawful takeover of the country by a minority because it takes a minimum, not a maximum. So it can take a minimum number of voices to change it for the maximum. And I know that there has been a large swing about all this identity politics and the individualism and how everybody's rights are important. But the more you turn these concepts into micro concepts for the minorities, you could go on forever to say this group deserves rights. You know, what about being a left-handed person? I want left-handed rights because do you know what it's like to be a minority in a right-handed world where the world is designed for right-handed people, where even people think right-handed, you know, where you don't fit in simply because your brain is wired in to being left-handed. You know, it's unfair, I'm a minority, I want my left-handed rights. <laughs> yeah, it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? And the more that we look into the micro, the more we will find that there are little individual groups of people that have specific things that the majority don't experience. But it, it shouldn't be that the majority have to act because of the minority. And because they, the majority, don't experience what the minority does, it doesn't mean that the minority are any less validated for their experience. It just means that not everybody has that experience. It's not a common experience. Now, any human being on this planet could take anything specific about their life and create something that they are a minority in. And you could go on and on because Scientists used to say that um, you know, matter was created reality uh, or thought. 
Now they actually understand that thought creates reality. So even when they're smashing those little things in the Hadron Collider, they know that they will never get to the point of a definitive end point of where they cannot go any further. Because as long as you're looking for something, something will be created from your intent to find it. And this is where, well, a lot of conspiracy theories don't work out that way. <laughs> they really don't. And there are a lot of out there conspiracy theories that I'm sure were deliberately started by psyops types just to really radicalize the, the points of views. Like, if anyone cannot even see that flat earth is a psyops, we know that Scientology is. There is so many things that have been manufactured to distract us from understanding the broader sense of our own existence and how we as individuals in the now have have the only opportunity to build the future is in the choices that we make now. Now sometimes some of those choices are not easy to make because well the consequences of doing the right thing sometimes isn't quite nice. You know, that's why a lot of people go for well you know I'll go for what's easy even if it's not the right thing to do they'll go for easy because there's less chance of consequence or bad consequence. But if you live long enough, you also realize that anything that goes around comes back. So, you know, you plant a bad seed, you're going to get a bad crop. It really is that basic kind of concept that you can't go around doing the wrong thing and then expecting that good things are going to come to you. And sooner or later, if you're doing the wrong thing, there is an end to that. There is the balance, the natural balance in the universe that will make sure that those that you say you're doing no harm to, that every person that does anything in this, this planet actually has an effect on every other living thing in this planet. And if you want to be you know, really out there in the universe. We're, we're connected to all life everywhere. So for where all these people are acting and bringing out these negative aspects, focusing on the fear that is generated around the vaccines and everything like that. I mean, before 2020 happened, you're not going to get me to take any needle. No, uh -uh. no way. So, you know, it's kind of, you know, an, a mute subject for me that I can't imagine under what condition they're going to be able to give it to me. So, and I don't see the drama that is created around, you know, you're going to have to have it. I see there's a planned rollout and I already know that there are certain professions that already have to have certain vaccines. Now, I could have just got controversial over the flu vaccine. You wouldn't even need to go any further with this, you know, rushed science stuff that's come with COVID. You know, but either way, no way. <laughs> I'm not into needles. In fact, I have cold panic attacks. So, you know, in my head, it's actually kind of hard to get a little bit fearful about for something that in my reality, I'd actually find it well, you know what, I'd actually have to be dead or dying and have no control. They'd have to hold me at gunpoint to stick that needle in me. And that's as simple as that. And I can't imagine in what scenario, like for all the rights that they say that were taken away. I mean, how many in the rest of Australia, I mean, Tasmania did not experience what Victoria did. And for sure, there are different. There are definitely layers to this this rollout, and it's going to go over a few years, I dare say. But 
But that's why it's up to each and every one of us to actually question those that are guiding us down this one oppositionary extremist road where the outcomes are going to meet opposition and resistance. It's just the way it's, it's the natural balance. You cannot, well, c tell me, can you imagine people marching on parliament and taking it over and saying, right, we've just taken over the country, we rule Australia now. And with that, I'm gonna bring it back down to earth because uh, here is Brendan McKenna's channel, well, one of them, We Are Awakening. Now, he does actually do a lot more on Facebook, and I'll leave links for that. And he's got quite a few groups that I haven't checked out. Um, sadly, I'm one person, and there's not enough of me to do all the things that I want to. This is something that I have been keeping an eye on because... This affects all people in the decisions that we make that guide the future. And I've talked about controlled opposition and Brendan actually talks about it as well. And he's actually bringing up some very valid points. I'm going to upload because I did ask him if I can share these on my channel and he said, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you, Brendan. And I'll leave a link for this channel too. And go to his Facebook page and see what other things, because he's got a whole heap of stuff there and links to other places where you can get information. He hasn't uploaded much here, but I'm going to upload these three. Because uh, in this one here, he actually makes a phone call, a very interesting phone call. And I think it's all something that we should all listen to. Because Brendan wanted to know what level of police involvement these protesters had. And the, well, I won't tell you, I'll let Brendan ask the questions in the phone call. And also too, listening to the conversation that Brendan is having with who is clearly a police officer it's just two guys having a chat and talking about things there is none of this you know fear doom and gloom kind of and that's the thing we have to realize too is that if the system's not working it's not working because it's made up of the people it's made up of and People like the police department have bosses. They have rules to follow. And whether they like it or not, they have to follow the rules. And they have got a job to do. Yes, they have got a choice. They can quit. <laughs> But then what happens then? You know, some, some police are actually out there, actually are trying to make a difference. They're not all corrupt and trying to, you know, do this, that and the other and be nasty to people. And the very interesting thing that Brendan does bring up is that these protests were done with cooperation from police. And it, well, as I said, I'll let him explore those possibilities. Because we do need to start looking at the people involved. We need to look at people like Ricardo Bosi that are, well, he deals, Brendan deals with him in, which one is it? Controlled opposition. And I like the, the start of this one because it goes straight into Richie Allen with Max Egan. Like, you know, Richie Allen would have to be one of the most obviously biased people that you could ever listen to. When I listen to how he treated Max Egan and let Max Egan tell his story and how he attacked Ken O'Keefe and what a jerk he was. You know, it was so clear that he is protecting Max Egan. And there's this whole worldwide ring of controlled opposition. It's not just here in Australia, but 
Certainly some of them have actually locally become louder voices. And these are one's influences that are trying to lead people in a certain direction, saying this is the answer. When, you know, I think some people, if they actually had a little bit more opportunity to find out more information about what happens in certain situations, they'd realise that, well, the outcome of any time that there is a revolution, a resistance, there is always the outcome of violence. <laughs> there is generally death. And it's, you know, food supplies start going astray and, you know, all these things start going wrong for human beings. Now, one of the things that does concern me, especially when it comes to these certain people, is that uh, even ones like Karen Brewer, like, I appreciate and I really, you know, you there's this part of you because it's all about abuse to children and pedophilia and trying to expose that, you don't want to say anything negative that you pick up from it. Because before Karen Brewer was Karen Brewer, she was Spires and there's a, or Spears, I think, but coincidentally, there's oh, there's too much crossover with um, what's his name? Hang on, Isaac Cappy. Yes, you follow some trails, and they lead back to certain people. And like, uh, there are some people that I've looked at, and I thought, wow, these people have been through something. But then there are other people, it's like, well, what are you trying to achieve? Like, I understand that you know that these things are going on, but there seems to be no personal experience. Like, what I speak about, I, I, well, I speak from personal experience, from what I've come to understand. And that really is the only position that I can understand anything in, from my own experience. So, in Karen Brewer's case, I ask, from what personal experience has she gone through to have her so fixated to even move from Australia to New Zealand so that she can continue to try to expose the 39 suppression orders and expose the pedophiles that are protected by them? Now, of course, these are important things that we should know in society, but the way that it's come into 2020 is that, well, will fixing, bringing out those, you know, getting rid of those suppression orders, will that fix what's wrong in society? In one stance, you'll go, well, yes, because it will show us that certain members of parliament have been protected and they shouldn't be there and case proven. But in realistic happenings, that's actually not going to happen. The only thing you can do is understand that these things do occur and then start to move forward and change it so that the people that we've got representing our system have got better moral character and that they certainly are not allowed to be in positions where they can abuse the trust given to them. Now, you might want to say that everything that's happened in 2020 and around the world is the government's fault and it's all the government's fault they've done this to the people. Well, what people have to actually remember is the government represent us. For better or for worse, our system is. It is made up of people, right? People. So, it, you know, for all the the parts of our system that don't work. Its ideals are there so that it can be better and it will work better for people. So that there is equality. But the people that we allow to get into politics and government 
are the ones that have moved things in a different direction from really what a lot of us would like. Because let's face it, we could organise a society where we all contributed and we don't need to pay to live somewhere. We don't need to pay for all these things that we as a community create, we enjoy the benefits of and we are not constantly paying profit for the privilege of being born on this planet and having to pay in some way to exist when it was our birthright to have it for free. And ultimately working towards a society in the future where any human being born into this planet is, does not have to work every day to pay for their accommodation. It is their birthright. Food, water and shelter are their birthright. And from there, your right to exist as an individual human being, as long as it doesn't interfere with the rights of others, with the rights of the community. And if you do want to be a little bit different, well, go do it where you're not affecting the majority. Just do your own thing quietly. You know, it's like with all this fuss about gender identity and sexual preferences. Who cares what goes on behind closed doors? It really is nobody's business, as long as it's between consenting adults. So why do we have to bring what belongs in the bedroom between consenting adults out into the public arena and have a discussion about whether we are actually men or women or whether there's other genders. And then to make laws about, well, you can't call me Mr. or Mrs. or Miss or anything like that or him or her um, because there's this whole string of pronouns now that you've got to... You can be actually... Like I could had, be had up for calling someone mate. Mate to me is a generalisation. Like, you know, oh, how's it going, guys? Guys is a generalisation, you know? It's human beings, people. And this is the thing that I can't understand with all these sovereignty and identity politics too, is that they talk about that the person is the one that doesn't exist, but the individual is the real person. But I'm thinking, hang on, isn't it that most people actually understand that the word person indicates a real living being? Because if it didn't represent a real living being, we would not say a deceased person. And a person is actually representative of people as a group. So no matter which way you look at it, when you look at when someone says the word person, I think of people. I think of a human being. If they say an individual, I actually think of an extremist. So when they show up and they say, I'm an individual, <laughs> you know, individual, um, I'm not the person, I'm the individual, because the person's the one with the birth certificate and that's a, a corporate identity and that's a dead thing and I'm not that person. They confuse themselves. Because, as I said, I think each and every one of us understand that a person is actually a living human being. And as we distinguish that from a deceased or dead person, otherwise, if it was, a, if it was already a, describing something dead, we wouldn't need to specify it's dead. And when we're talking about a person or people, unless we specify that they're deceased, you're going to assume that they're talking about a living, breathing, flesh and blood human being. Uh, not an individual. <laughs> anyway. So this uh, video up here, I'd never heard of this uh, particular thing, Elizabeth Lizzie Rose, that I watched it and the whole time she's talking, I mean, yeah, she was just raising enough flags, but 
The guy on the right is like one of those bubble dogs that you see in the back of cars where the head just bubbles around all the time. And it was like this real drama intensity that they were trying to create when they weren't even really feeling it. And what she's talking about, I mean, you know, it was like, um, oh, I'd have to ask my daughter about well, the name of that girl that actually said that she had some kind of terminal disease. And she raised all this money on, you know, all the different platforms. And then she was found out to be a fraud. I mean, how can people actually do that? Well, you'd be surprised at how many com people can do that. Some people won't even be doing it with deliberate intent. They are fooling themselves. And because they are fooling themselves, they can fool you too. So you need to be aware of the people that haven't got your best interests at heart. They've got their fears worrying them and are projecting them out to you to worry about and when it comes to all the fear that is around the vaccine look I understand exactly what's going on with it and as I've said you'd be hard pressed to get me to get any needle <laughs> I avoid them you know um, I'd have to be really really sick and the thing was that when I went into surgery a few years ago I actually gave them, got them to give me all that number gel and everything because um, I have um, panic attacks. If you come near me with a needle, I do have a panic attack. So yeah, I can't imagine any scenario where I'm going to be willingly offering myself up for it even if I didn't already have views of, well, I don't like what's in the vaccines and I certainly don't like what the vaccines in the past have done to human beings but these this fresh batch of ones well that's a game changer if it's going to be looking at uh, changing the RNA sequencing in your very system how much of this is actually you know dramatization there are some things that you can't know until they unfold I mean we all thought that, uh, you know, 2012 is going to be the end of the world, or well, not we, you know, there was, and it was going to happen by all these dramatic ways. Well, the date's out a little bit, and no, it's not the end of the world, it's just cycling into the start of a new one, and here we are in eight years later, in 2020, cycling in to the start of a new way of doing things in the world. Now, how that ends up has got a lot to do with how each of us make choices to direct the future by what we do now. And the thing is that you need to remember that if it, if it involves opposition rather than cooperation, you're, not, you're going to meet opposition. You need to create scenarios of cooperation. Now I know that there are a lot of people that think that that is ideal. But there is not, there is already enough human beings out there doing it. And as I said, that we need to take responsibility for how our governments are. It is not the government's fault that they are the way that they are. It's ours for allowing those with certain um, characteristics um, to actually hold those positions of power and control over the majority of citizens. We need to change the focus of the individuals and limit their power within those positions. We need to modify what we have, not to come against it and tear it down and go into complete anarchy where there are no rulers, but to control the destiny ourselves by the choices that we make, come up with better options. And there are so many things that are put out there to divide us. And especially one of the things is the racial issues that come up. The gender equality, the, all these issues that come up that are dividing us as human beings rather than bringing us together. I don't recognize people as races, religions, or genders, ages, or 
I recognize them for who they are. And truth be told, there have been some really young people that I have spoken to that are really clued in. You know, I'm amazed at just how they've got it all figured out, or not figured out because none of us have. It's an evolving process, that's it. But how they've got to a certain stage of understanding certain things, whereas other people are, well, like Fenos here, rah, beating their head against the wall, coming in opposition, saying we must do this, you know, I'm the one out there that's doing this, what are you doing because I'm out there putting my life on the line and you're not doing anything, so shut up and leave me alone. Well, he didn't achieve much, did he? And that's the point, is that you butt against something, it's going to butt back. You need to find better ways to deal with things. And surely we do have enough history to look back on to actually look at the possible outcomes for certain actions. I mean, one of the, the biggest... I remember the French Revolution was something that we had to study a lot of when I was in high school. And, uh, oh, I thought about all those people that got guillotined and had their head chopped off. That was just such... You know, if you're going to kill me... You know, I thought, nah, that'd have to be one of my worst ways to go, I think, is to be guillotined. It might be quick once they get up there and they chop your head off, but, you know, I think, yeah, lethal injection might be better. <laughs> Maybe that's what they've got planned with the vaccine. Because <laughs> that's what it seems like to me, is that uh, it, it'd be under those circumstances, if Australia had capital punishment, that they'd have to that they'd actually be able to force a needle into my arm. And on that, I'm going to finish up now. And I'm going to upload Brendan's videos. Have a listen to them. He's got some... Well, this one here, he actually is talking in it. And so he is in this one too. He has some really good things to, to, th to think about. You know, he says some things... Uh, well, better than what I can. So if you listen to him, you can <laughs> get it heard better than what I do because I beat around the bush a lot sometimes, don't I? I'm not as clear as some people. This one here is a lot of video cl oh, thumbnails, uh, screenshots, saves. He's clipped it together uh, as a presentation. If you want to really explore the information that he's presented, uh, you need to pause it and read everything as you go through. He's only got background music going, so you're not going to be missing out on any vocals. It is designed that you stop and read it. Actually, someone in one of them said, oh, this is too fast, you can't read it. It's like, oh, you poor person, it's called the pause button. <laughs> anyway, I said I was going to finish it, and so I shall. I'll catch you next time. Bye.